wonderful. Okay, here we go. All right, so we've, we've talked about this topic before, so this is kind of a bit of a review. It's our number system. But it is important that math students understand our number system. Now, I know you don't get the joke to the right. It is supposed to be a joke. I is an imaginary number. That's what I is. And the pi symbol is saying to the imaginary number, get real, because it's imaginary. But pi is an irrational number. So the imaginary number is saying to pi, hey, pi, be rational, man. Don't be so irrational. So that's the joke, all right? So pi is telling the imaginary one to get real, and the imaginary one is telling the irrational one to be rational. All right. Beautiful. Anybody get it without the explanation? <laughs> Look at that. Beautiful. All right, we'll come back to the box there in a moment. Again, we've talked about this before, so this is a review, but for you guys, the more times we do it, the more it'll stick as you are wiring your brain, right? we got to fire it to wire it. Okay, so how does it all start with our natural numbers? Can anybody raise your hand and tell me who, what are the natural numbers? What numbers are the natural Luke? Exactly. One, two, three, and we use dot, 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 because they go on forever and ever. Amen. All right. So is 12 a natural number? Yes. Is 337,242 a natural number? Yes. yes. Is 2.1 a natural number? Yes. No. No. Is 10 fifths a natural number? Yes. 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 10 fifths is two. And no, it is. Ten-fifths is two. It is a natural number. I I didn't trick you. All right, so be careful with that. Negative three, natural number? No, no negatives. One, two, and on. And be careful of the tricky ones, Emily. All right. Somebody raise your hand and tell me the whole numbers. Give me the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Ashley. No. Those would be the naturals. She said one, two, three. Those are the naturals. Give me the whole numbers, Raph. Negative one. No. <laughs> Brendan. Well, that's not all of them, though. I need all of them. I need all the whole numbers. Nobody remembers what I told you to how to remember the whole numbers? You all forgot the whole. I told you the whole numbers. Don't forget the whole. Don't forget the whole. So it's zero, one, two, dot, dot, dot. So the whole numbers are just like the natural numbers with one more member. They have a zero. So is seven a whole number? Yes. But more specifically, it's a natural number. Zero, however, is only a whole number. It is not a natural number. All of these fit in the category. For example, Allison is a seventh grader, yes? Is she also an HCS student? Yes. So specific, she's an ACS student, but specifically, she's a seventh grader. You follow? Some in here are also HCS students, but they're not seventh graders. They are eighth graders, right? And that's fine. That's the way it works, all right? So a whole number is, you know, zero, one, two, three. So seven's a whole number, but specifically, it's a natural number. You always go to the most defined set. We'll talk about that more. So the integers. All the negative numbers, so dot, 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 I'll go negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, dot, dot, dot. Let's see if you guys remember this. What are the three dots called? Um, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> Emily? Ellipses. It's plural, ellipses. And how many numbers in a pattern do you need before you use the three ellipses? Omar? Yeah, you need at least three. So three ellipses, you need at least three numbers. I listed five. Did I need all five? No, I put five for clarity's sake. That's all. Really, any three of those numbers in a row is that set. All right? So all the negatives, zero, all the positives. So this one's for Emily. Is negative 33 thirds a integer? Yes. Negative 33 over 3 is a negative 11. It is an integer. Okay? It is. All right? Rational numbers! Rational. 
Rational numbers is anything that can be a fraction. Anything that can be a fraction. i got to go higher here, so I'm going to get rid of my shade. Anything that can be a fraction. Okay, so let me list some things here. Uh, Three-fifths, right? Negative five-thirds. Okay. How about, uh, how about like 21 thirds? That's fine. Improper? Yeah, it's still a fraction. Still a fraction. Um, you guys may not know this, but 4.18 can be made into a fraction. Matter of fact, can 2.7 bar be made into a fraction? Yes. So anything that can be a fraction is a rational number. And that leaves our irrationals, and I'm going to do these in red. These are non-fractions. You cannot make a fraction out of it. Notice our chart. Everything else was inside of the Q rational numbers. Irrational is its own separate thing. No irrational is a rational, but all of these are real numbers, right? The whole thing is real numbers. All the rationals, all the irrationals are the reals. So how do you know with the non-fractions? Because 4.18 looks like maybe that would be a non-fraction, or 2.7 bar. Well, how do you know? All right, what are non-fractions? Two categories. All non-perfect square roots, all non-perfect square roots, all non-perfect square roots, all non-perfect square roots. For example, the square root of 5. Can you evenly take the square root of 5? No, you can't. It's like 2 point something. So is the square root of 4 an irrational number? No, it's 2, right? It's, it's a actually all the way down to a natural number, square root of 4. Uh, square root of 7, square root of 11, square root of 10, square root of 12. So what ones are the perfect square ones? Square root of 4. Next one would be square root of... Missed one. Square root of 4, then square root of... 9, right? Square root of 16. Square root of? No. What's, what's 5 squared? Square root of 25. Next is square root of 36. Then the square root of 49. Then the square root of? Then the square root of 81. Then the square root of 100. Then the square root of 121. Then the square root of? 144 and 13 squared is 169. I don't know anymore after that. All right, so I know I know 15 squared is 225. 14, poor guy, doesn't get any props. All right, so that's one. All non-perfect square roots are irrationals. The other thing is with the decimals, non-terminating, non-terminating, non-repeating decimals. Any non-terminating, non-repeating decimal. Okay, so let's go back to our chart real quickly. Let me do a few and then I'll take your question, okay? Okay, so don't, don't draw the number on the outside. I'm just going to get you to think first off. So if I had a negative 3, we want to go inside as much as possible to the most restrictive place. For example, if I, if I said, Allison, I don't want you to say HCS student, I want you to say 7th grader, right? That's more restrictive, more specific. So where would I stick the negative 3 into which ring? Brendan? Uh, so which letter, Z, W, N, or Q? Z, correct. The negative 3 is an in integer. Okay, next one. 
where would I stick a an 18 ninths? Most restrictive. Luke? Uh, it is a rational, but I can be more restrictive. Daniel? It is a natural number because it's a 2. 18 ninths is a 2. You have to think of what it becomes. All right? You do have to think of what it becomes. All right? Now, by the way, look. Everybody look up here. Don't do this in your notes. Every natural number is also a whole number, is also an integer, is also a rational number. But we'll be more specific. Just like you're an HCS student, right? But specifically, you're a seventh grader, right? Yeah. You follow? Got it? Is that funny? You shouldn't be funny, funny people. Shh. Time's a wasted. All right, so how about something like this? How about 2.6? Where does that go? 2.6. Brendan? In the Q? How many agree with Brendan in Q? It is in the Q, 2.6. It is a non-repeating non-term, and it doesn't fit that, so therefore it can be made a fraction. It is a rational. It's definitely not an integer, though, right? And it's definitely not a whole number, and it's definitely not a natural number. Um, how about this one? How about zero divided by negative seven? What is that one? Aaron? Nope. Zero divided by negative. Emily? <laughs> Integer Z? Nope. Yeah. Hannah? It's a whole number. It's zero. All right. Folks, zero divided by anything is zero, all right? We've said that many times. Zero divided by anything is zero. Square root of three. Oh. Uh, square, irrational. irrational. Pi. Say it if you know it. All right, we just got done with the cartoon, right? Irrational. How about this one? 2.7. 2.732481 dot dot dot. Raph, that is irrational. Non terminating, non repeating. It doesn't end and it doesn't repeat. There's no bar and it doesn't end, okay? All right, let's go to the second page. So there's our real numbers again. Here's a concept called subset. Have we talked about that before, subset? Okay. Quiet, please. A subset is when all the members of the first set are also members are inside of the second set. Then you'd say the first set is a subset of the second set. And the symbol is like that, right? It's kind of a sideways U with a line underneath. It means subset. It means all the members of the first set are in the second. So, for example, I'm going to take my blue here. N is a subset of W. Isn't all of the N circle inside the W circle? Yes. Yep. Because every natural number is also a whole number. Is 20 a whole number? Yes. Is 4,000 a whole number? Yes. Is 8,000 million zillion a whole number? Yes. yes. Okay. Any natural number you pick is also a whole number. All of N is in W. Now, with, the, with this diagram, it's clear as C. The whole circle is in the other circle. So, C, how about this? Are the whole numbers a subset of the rational numbers? Is all of W inside of Q? Yeah. So the answer is yes. W is a subset. Hey, is N a subset of Q? Yeah. Is Z a subset of Q? Yes. Yeah. Is N a subset of Z? Yes. Yeah. Is Z a subset of N? No. No. Is all of Z in N? No. no. All of N is in Z. Are subsets, here you go, are you ready? Aha moment. Are subsets commutative? No. 
No. Awesome. You were right. No, right? Can you switch the order on subset and still be true? No. Because is n a subset of z? Yes. Is z a subset of n? No. Subsets are not commutative. Awesome. All right. The name of a diagram that illustrates the relationships, which, by the way, is up above, is called a Venn diagram, V-E-N-N, -N, Venn, a Venn diagram. Okay, so watch. My time's beginning to get away, so we need to be careful. If I wanted to draw a Venn diagram of N is a subset of Z, I would start off with a rectangle. I would then draw a circle inside of it. <clears throat> now, you have to know that n is the natural numbers, right? That's the symbol. And you have to know that z is the integers. And I have to think of the relationship between n and z. I'm going to use a little color here. I'm going to put n inside, right? And z outside. I've shown all of n inside of z. Now, what if you didn't know what they were? It doesn't matter. Don't do this, but look. What if we just said some set A and subset some set B? Well, make the outside one B and the inside one A, and it has to be that way because we know all of the first is in the second. You follow? It has to be if it's a subset. Then diagram, we'll do more of that next year in algebra and stuff, and as time goes on. We're just trying to introduce it to you guys right now. All right, number four. The union. You guys know what union is put together, right? The union of all rational numbers and all irrational numbers is the set called the? Whole, whole no. What do you get when you do all of Q and all of IRR? The real numbers. The reals. Get real, people. Get real. Stop being imaginary. Okay, so let me go back. Quiet, please. So, again, this chart represents the way our real numbers are broken up. So, let me ask you are the rational numbers a subset of the irrational numbers? Is all of Q inside of IRR? No. Is, is the irrationals a subset of the rationals? No. Here's another question. Are the irrationals a subset of the real numbers? Yes. Are the rationals a subset of the reals? Yes. Are the natural numbers a subset of the irrational numbers? Is all of N inside of IRR? No. Right? And again, that's that relationship with subset. All of the first has to be in the second. So let me do one thing here with you guys with numbers. I know you don't have time to write this. I just want you to watch something. I want to do just, I'm going to come up in here. I'm going to do a set T. And just for time's sake, I'm going to do one seven. And then I'm going to have a set. Oh, let's not use O. Let's go with um, K. And I'm going to stick in it 0, 1, 7, 11. So here are sets with numbers. Is set K a subset of set T? Yes or no? Is K a subset of T? No. No. Is T a subset of K? You want to see the Venn diagram? Here's K. And again, inside would be T. Okay? Because all of T belongs. And if I were to write all the numbers, I'd put 1 and 7 in T. And I don't need to repeat 1 or 7. I'd put the 0 and the 11 outside in the K portion, right? Because isn't the 0, the 1, the 7, and the 11 still inside of K? It is. See how that works? All right. Venn diagrams show relationships, and so you should be able to tell from things. All right, I'm going to do one more thing with you. Don't draw this. I'm going to ask you a question. I'm going to go right here. 
Sometimes a Venn diagram will look like this. Here, and I'll put some numbers in here just to help you. One, two, three, four, seven, eight. Okay? Is B a subset of A? Is every part of B in A? Is the 7 and 8 in A? No, it's not. Can't you see the circle from A? So B is not a subset of A. Is A a subset of B? Is all of A and B? No, neither one of these are subsets. Okay? By the way, what would the intersection of set A and set B be? Where do they intersect? What do they have in common? One and two. One and two. Talk about that down the road. All right. Oh, that's it for today. One through 23, 25, 37. Lots of questions. Get them right.